All right, everybody, welcome back to Premium Picks. Tonight is the Thursday night bet show. Uh, we're going to be breaking down UFC fight night, Sandhagen versus Font. Uh, again, this is a bet for every single fight. If you want the detailed breakdowns, go back and watch Monday's video. But let's get right into it and let's try to pick a, pick a spot for each fight on the card. First fight of the night, we got Odie Osborne versus Azu Almabeyev. Uh, this is still a fight I'm not big on. For me, it's almost a dogger pass. I know everybody thinks Azu's going to take him down and submit him, and he might. He might. For me, it's just not something I'm playing. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not going to play it either, but I just I don't know if he's going to take him down as easy as everybody thinks he's going to take him down. Well, he's not looked terrible in his last few fights, and even the ones he's lost, he's not looked absolutely terrible. Him getting out knocked out by Manal Cop back a few fights ago, he, he was actually... He pro- there's a good argument to say that he was winning that fight up, up until that point, right? He Whatever, it doesn't matter. He lost, but uh, that's being said, newcomer coming in, uh, I don't know, Duggar pass, same here. Uh, I'm not too strong on it, though. Don't get me wrong here. I, I actually, I've been thinking about the over 1.5, just because everyone thinks it's going to be quick. I, I don't think he's going to take him down and submit him quick, but uh, honestly, th- this whole card is is a card I'm, I'm not going to be betting a whole lot. So a lot of them are passes for me, to be honest. But uh, yeah, the, the play is dog or pass or over 1.5. That's all I can really think of for that fight. I agree. All right, moving on. We got the late uh, last minute replacement. We got Sean Woodson. Oh, my thing just cut out here. We got Sean Woodson versus Dennis Bazooka or Bazugsha, however you pronounce it. Just call him Bazooka um, Man. <laughs> Bazooka Man. There we go. Uh <laughs> If you look at both of these guys' records, they're both filled with decisions. They're not really big finishers. Um, and again, being a, a last-minute replacement, I, I, I'm going to be full disclosure, I did not get to, to do enough study on this fight that I would want to. I didn't give it the diligence it probably deserves. But going through the records, it looks like neither is a dangerous finisher. So I, I would like the overs or maybe even fight to go the distance. But again, it, it's another fight. I, I'm, I'm not putting my money on it. But what, what do you think? Uh, all the finish equities on Bazooka, to be honest with you. Uh, Sean Woodson, uh, zero finish equity. In the, the one fight he finished was uh, some I forgot, I forgot who it was, but he finished one fight. Everything else is just a pitter patter professional boxer style uh fight. Um, I did get to watch a little Bazooka. Uh, it seems like he does push for the takedown, he does, he, he is sort of wrestle heavy, so I feel that works in his favor in this fight. I would, I don't have any odds on like the overs or anything, but uh. I do like Bazooka as a one plus one fifty fucking underdog. Problem is, it's the short notice has got me a little scared. I don't know what his gas tank's gonna look like. Um, neither guy has great gas tank because Sean Woodson himself kind of tires down in the third round, so this can get sloppy. And on the feet, Sean Woodson should win, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm dog. I would be way stronger full camp dogger pass. It's probably a over bet uh, one and a half at best but uh yeah i like the wrestle heavy approach if he doesn't tire out he should actually win the fight but you know there's red flags all right moving on we got uh one of the funnest fights for me personally we got jake hadley versus cody durden uh you know what it's funny i try not to watch too many other videos and let other people influence my pick it seems like everybody is on Durden by decision to to be able to hold him down over three rounds. And I get it. That is a clear path. But I, I think everybody's crazy. I mean, I shouldn't say crazy, but Hadley is the more dangerous fighter. I think that he will at some point land a big shot and throw on a choke. So Durden kind of gasses to me. Like, sure, he looked good. He, he got it done against Charles Johnson, but he got tired. I think Hadley is way more dangerous. So I'm going to go against the common consensus here, and I'm going to say Hadley might lose the first round, but at some point he's going to land a big shot and he's going to slap on a choke or something and find the finish. So for me, my play is Hadley to find a finish. Uh, what do you think? Uh, call me crazy. <laughs> call me to go. <laughs> call me. Call me. Call me the. Uh, I follow everybody else, but I I didn't look at anybody else until I we actually. So what I do is I I do look at other shows, but like. After we do ours, right? So uh, I always try to have my own opinion and see what people think about uh, my opinion. So unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, my opinion was the same as everyone's this time. I do like Cody Durden. I don't know about the decision. 
But I do like your your play of the Cody Durden plus the over not 1.5 when we were talking earlier this week. Does give you close to plus 200. Gives you that little bit of extra juice if you really like Cody Durden to win. Um, I do like the over more than I do like Cody Durden himself. I don't think Jake Hadley is going to finish him that quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I still think he holds him down. Hadley, the, the problem is I watched that Hadley versus uh, Sabatini fight, was it? Where he got held down, or is it Nascimento? Nascimento, one of the two grapplers that held him down for like Nascimento. Nascimento, yeah. Uh, one of the two grapplers held him down for, and he had no way up. The like the get up game wasn't there, so it scares me, right? Because I know Charles Johnson got up a lot with Cody Durden, but Charles Johnson is notorious for a pretty good get up game. Uh, shitty takedown defense, right? So Hadley does have shitty takedown defense, right? And I mean. Oh, fuck, man. The problem is it was like 23% or some shit like that, right? So, like, that's what's got me stoked that a chain wrestler who Durden always, always chain wrestles, right? So, I'll give him his fight IQ props where he gets it. So, I'm going to go with the grappler over the striker. Yeah, fair enough. Moving on, we got Billy Quarantillo versus Damon Jackson. Uh, Tough fight to predict. I mean, Jackson, I think, has all the the finishing side. Like I, I don't think Quarantillo is really a finisher. Uh, maybe he overwhelms him with volume or, or maybe he pitter patters his way to a decision. Um, I, I think for me, it's a dog or pass. Uh, and I believe Billy Q is a sizable favorite. Am I wrong there? Or? Uh, minus 175, pretty sizable. So I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't really like either of them. I don't trust either of them. I wouldn't bet big money on either of them. I'm just, I, I guess, call me a Billy Q hater. I, I don't I don't think the guy's that good. Not that I think Jackson's great, but for me, it's dog or pass, and I wouldn't go big on this fight regardless. What do you think? I think the under is live. The two and a half under is very live. Either Billy Q overwhelms him and just like not knocks him into oblivion, but like overwhelms him, pops him in a corner and gets the Herb Dean stoppage. Or uh, Billy Q, they get sloppy and it gets onto the ground and uh, Damon Jackson finishes him with a rear naked choke. All that is pos- plausible. All of that is plausible. And uh, for all those haters that like the decision, the decision's at plus 300 plus on both sides. If you guys think this is going a long way, might as I This is my thing sometimes with these fights. If both decisions are over plus 300 plus 400, why not play both sides? You're going to get paid pretty decent on both sides, and you're going to make money if if that's the way you're thinking, right? I mean, I think it's going to go under, but there's a very there's a very well good realm where this gets sloppy in the third round and stays standing and nothing happens. So I hate the fight, to be honest with you, to pick. Uh, I would like yeah. Damon Jackson. If I was going to pick Damon Jackson, who I think has a good chance to win, I'd like more than plus 150 on him, though. I just, I don't know. I mean, I pass. <laughs> under two and a half is my pick under two and a half is what i think realistically there's a lot of passes on this card honestly more passes than normal i i feel like weak saying pass or pass like there's just sometimes the best play is to pass if you're not confident don't play it seriously i don't mind the main card here but these prelims are kind of fucking whack all right moving on we got jeremiah wells versus carlston harris uh I, I think if there's a knockout, it's Wells. I think if there's a decision, it's Wells being on top, ground and pounding, just control time. If there's a submission, it's Harris. He's going to catch a choke potentially. Uh, so, I mean, it gets tricky. I don't falter either side. I don't love either guy. And in, in fact, I don't think Wells is great at all, but I think he will be strong enough to be the one on top and, and maybe grind it out or maybe ground and pound him. Uh, I'll be happy if Harris chokes him out. Cool. Uh, no complaints here. I don't like Jeremiah Wells, but I think he's just the more explosive guy here. So I think Wells will get it done at these kind of pick em odds. Like the odds are very close. Give me Wells. Not a huge confident pick by any means. What do you think? So I was real confident in Wells when we did the first podcast. I'm still confident that he's my... So I think he's very chinny now from looking at a lot of tape, right? So like he's been knocked down and you know what? You know what else got me? kind of looking at it is that fight with blood diamond he went one for four and takedowns before he actually took him down and then so but like like don't give carlson harris that much chances right because carlson harris is a lot better than blood diamond right 
He's a lot better than uh, who did else did he knock out? Uh, who was the first? Court McGee. Uh, Carl Snares is better than Court McGee at this point in their careers. So I don't give him that sort of chance. So I feel like this fight is a little bit closer. Um, a good spot that I just found out was the over one and a half is minus 145. I feel like if Jeremiah Wells goes balls to the wall and goes striking heavy in the first round, he's gonna he might get knocked out because. Yeah, he's, his striking defense kind of stinks, to be honest with you. He leaves his head right up there, and Carlson Harris can hit a lucky shot. And he's not scared to throw a lucky shot, to be honest with you. So what I really think is the wrestle-heavy approach, kind of what he did with Semi the Jedi there, and just hold down Harris and try to stay away from getting choked out. So over one and a half at minus 145, minus 145 is pretty good for this weight class. So that's my spot. All righty. Moving on, the last prelim of the night, we got Rayoni Barcelos versus Kyler Phillips. This fight is like honestly the most red flags for me. Like I don't know how anyone can feel confident here. You got Barcelos coming off a huge, brutal knockout loss, and you got Phillips who pissed hot and has been missing for for time. So we don't know how he's going to look. Uh, and the funny thing is, is Barcelos is a good fighter at his best, and Phillips is a good fighter at his best. But Phillips is balls to the walls. Crazy, crazy first round pace. And then he slows down and he gasses and he gasses. So there's a chance he starches Barcelos quick. Maybe Barcelos' chin is gone. But I, I'm not, not going to say that just yet. Umar's a good fighter. And there's a chance that if he doesn't knock out Barcelos, that he will gas. Like, again, this this fight, it's just tricky to me. They're both good. Uh, give me Phillips. But, I, again, it's another fight. I, I wouldn't bankroll by any means. What do you think? I think minus 200 is the fucking trap line of the card, to be honest with you. So I was looking back at Kyler Phillips' like odds and shit, and like he's always a sizable favorite, right? Like a minus 400, even a minus 600. So minus 200, they're tr I feel like the books are trying to make you bet on Kyler Phillips. And Rowney isn't that bad. So like the grappling equity, I feel like, is all Rowney. The striking equity is pretty damn close too as well right because Rowney is not a shitty striker and Phillips is not an amazing by any means striker I think they're actually pretty close to be honest with you and 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 Kyler Phillips so I was looking looking back at his wins he is always employing some sort of grappling to those wins it's when he tires out after going balls to the wall in the first round he he falls on his grappling so when he falls on his grappling that means he's tired right so it, you can always bet this fight live. That's another option is to bet round. Ronnie's probably losing round one to this guy, right? More than likely. But uh, who's to say that gas tank doesn't get zapped? Because uh, we've seen it. We've seen it on numerous occasions. Even the fights he's won, we've seen it, right? Because he'll bank two rounds and then fucking look like shit in the third round. So minus 200 is a trap. Don't do it. It's dog or pass, but the over one and a half should hit. Because both these guys are pretty durable. I don't care if Rowney got knocked out. He got knocked out by the New Mega Madoff that can actually strike. So this is that's yeah. the striking New Mega Madoff. So uh this is that's this is not a Khabib because he probably wouldn't have got tapped on the on the ground. He would have probably been defensively sound enough to 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 warrant something. So I really yeah. think it's dogger pass, and I really think the one and a half over is probably pretty safe there. All right, moving on to the main card. If you haven't already, please like and please subscribe. First fight of the main card, we got Ignacio Bahamandes versus Ludovic Klein. Uh, nothing's changed from, from Monday for me. Um, I still like Bahamandes, most likely by decision. But uh, e even if you just want some extra extra money on him, I would say Bahamandes over 1.5, and you're going to get some extra, extra value there. Um I like the over in general, to be honest. I mean, even if he loses, I, I would assume it's going to be an over. So if you want a conservative pick, I'd say over. But uh, if you're looking for value, Bahamandes over 1.5. What do you think? I've always liked this kid, Bahamandes. I'm not going to change. I think Ludovic Klein is a little bit overrated. Uh, very low output. Always looking. He's, it's head kick. It's that Mirko Krokop head kicky that he has. That's the one, man. I feel like he can't get up to Bahamandes there. I think... Uh, Bahamundas himself is good at holding distance. He's not the greatest of strikers. Don't get me wrong. This guy's not going to win a technical boxing match against a technical striker. Not yet, at least. He's still young. So, but I feel like he's got this fight covered at least. At least. 
this one over one and a half. There's a good sizable amount of bets you can make on that too. I feel like this is the strongest lean I have that one of our strongest leads on the whole card together, at least between the two of us. So, I mean, every time out, he's almost like overachieved or, or looked better at least. Whereas Klein, every time out, he disappoints every single time he disappoints. <laughs> I'm in Bob Mundas look good against, uh, what's his name again? The last time, uh, fuck the wrestler sort of guy. He just, he just picked him apart. It looked, he looked pretty good. I like him. I, yeah. I, I, it's one of the best leans I have on the card. Like, you know, favorite leans. There's a few dog leans, but this whole card's full of dogs. Yep. All right, moving on. We got Tanner Boser versus Alexa Kamur. Uh, what a garbage fight. I honestly have, I, I, I don't know why it's on the main card. Like, a win doesn't really do anything for either guy, really. Seriously, what what's Boser going to say? I beat Kamur? Like, fuck, who cares? And I, so for me, the, the fight is dog or pass. And, and I don't know. Give me Kamur again. Another fight I would not bankroll or have any confidence in. But uh, I'm not taking Tanner Boser as a favorite over anybody personally. Uh, what do you think? I, I'm i probably playing Kamur as a, a single. Because I, I was looking at, I looked at the tape after we uh, we did the, uh, the original cast. And uh, yeah. So both these guys are really not going to employ this grapple game. And if someone's going to employ the grapple game, it's going to be Kamor that employs the grapple game. It's not going to be Tanner Bowser trying to take down Alexa Kamor. Right? So that's not going to happen. And who's the better striker? From what I've seen, from what I've seen, it's Alexa Kamor. And to be honest with you, all Tanner Bowser really can do is stand at distance and leg kick him to death. And we saw how the judges love that against Andre Arlovsky. They love that, right? No. Judges don't love Tanner Bozer by any means. His style is really enigmatic. It's shit. It's just it's his bad style. He should change. He needs to get if he was anywhere as aggressive as he was in that Felipe Linz fight, then maybe he'd win some more fans over. I don't think that's what he's trying to do, but he's not even trying to win a fight, to be honest with you. So no. Nah. One in four favorite against a younger fighter let's believe that Kamor is still only about 26 or 27 years old and when he last fought it was two years ago and in looking at his history it wasn't he didn't piss hot it was injuries that kept him out so I'm thinking he's still young still training and when usually when these young guys there's a better chance he's improved than Tanner's improved Let, let's be honest here so yeah I mean I'm with you on this I'm actually strong about Kamor on this one I think I'm going to take him and I'm going to put a uh, half unit to a unit on it and just hope for the best because that's one of the other stronger plays I think is on the card. Nothing parlayable folks though. Not this I'm not saying throw this in a fucking four or four leg or anything like that. Just play it by itself and get lucky and win a bet back for the better UFC that comes up next week. Off topic, if anybody's watching this and you're a big Tanner Boser fan, please comment why cuz to me this guy is the Roy Nelson lookalike, the Alibaba Roy Nelson with no grappling skills like Roy Nelson and no knockout power like Roy Nelson. What the hell is there to like about this guy? But the boxing stinks too, though, right? Stinks. Yeah, but it's just leg kicks. Just leg kicks. I can't sit there and watch this guy leg kick someone to death. And it's not even like a Jose Aldo leg kick where he's just like whipping and you're hearing that shit. No, these are just like... Me, my kid walking up to me and just kicking me in the leg. Like, my kid walking up to me and kicking me in the leg. Like, that's what it feels <laughs> like. Well, well, at least that's what it looks like on TV. And for all the Tanner Bowser fans, I'm sorry if you guys feel that we're making fun of this guy. We're not. I'm just saying that's his style. He needs to change his style. Because, like I said, that Felipe Linz fight, he looked great. But he never comes out and throws. Never comes out and throws. All right, moving on. We got Gavin Tucker versus Diego Lopes. Um, Tucker had a lot of momentum and hype around him back in the day, but he's been gone a while. He's coming off the loss to Dan Ige, where it starts in like 13 seconds. You can't look into it too much because anybody can get one-shotted. Um, but you know what? You're gone for two years. Lopes is, 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 is young. He looked great against Evlaev. His striking looked fine. His grappling is great. Gavin Tucker's majority of wins were actually through the ground game. He actually is a, a grappler first, and I don't think he's going to submit Diego Lopes. So I like everything in Lopes' favor here, to be honest. Like, uh, give me Lopes, and uh, I I actually think inside the distance as well. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I like Lopes here. What do you think? 
Back note on that Kamer fight, I forgot to say something. I like yeah. the over the over two and a half and the the go to decisions about minus one fifty and minus one thirty. So I like I I like that fight to go to decision. No one's finishing anybody. And uh let's just say Kamer by decision is plus three twenty five. That's not bad. So anyway, back on to the Lopes fight. I love him. I like a lot of money coming in on him too. I do like him in this spot. Gavin Tucker's battle with a lot of injuries, and we don't know what version we're going to get out of him. He's bound to lose round one, and I think Lopes could probably keep up the pace in round two. So, like you said, it's Gavin Tucker wins these fights on the ground, so I don't think he's going to outstrike Lopes. Lopes is a little weird with the striking. It's not as technical as you'd like it to be, and it's not as tight as possible. But uh, I do also think the line has a little bit of overcompensation uh, for his last fight and how well he looked against Movsar. So uh there's a little recency bias in there. So buyer beware. It's not the it's not the it's not the greatest of lies because now it's sitting at 170. Earlier in the week it was sitting at what like 130 or something like that. So I would buyer beware on it. But you know, I feel like with the amount of fights on this card and the value anywhere else, this is not bad as of, of a spot. You know what I mean? I like him more at 170 than Phillips at minus 200. Yes. Completely agree with that. There's less of a chance that Lopes fucking shits in your fucking dinner plate than fucking Phillips shits in your dinner plate. I'll tell you that. I mean, sorry. My bad. There's less of a, there's more chance that Phillips shits in your dinner plate for sure. But like, nobody, like, you don't even know what you're going to get with Phillips minus 200. At least, you know, Lopes can come out hot, right? At least. Yep. I mean, unless that last fight was just because it was Movsar, but. All right, moving on. We got the featured fight. We got Dustin Jacoby versus Kennedy. Kennedy. In <laughs> uh... <laughs> Jukwe. <laughs> I looked it up on Google, 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 like uh, how to say the name. And it said in Jukwe. And then I heard a couple of guys. So I'm going to go it with sounds, it. Sounds right. It sounds right every time someone else says it. Whenever I say it, it doesn't sound right. So. <laughs> Ninja Kawani, remember that guy? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, the whole world's on Kennedy here, and and I get it because uh, Dustin's kind of underwhelming. He's kind of a point fighter. The judges don't love him. But one thing you can say about Dustin is he is durable. He is a technical striker, and uh, like yeah, he's not ch- like like Kennedy likes to hit you hard, kind of wobble you, and slap on a choke and finish you, something like that. I don't think he's going to get the submission here. And I don't think he's really going to hurt Dustin. So I almost see this being a point fight, which is the kind of fight Dustin kind of excels in. So I keep going back and forth. I, I really do think Jacoby can get this done. Um, but I, I actually, for, for me, the play would be over 1.5, maybe even over 2.5. Ooh, I just, I just don't see point. anything big happening quick. What do you think? Over 2.5, minus 125, genius play. I like that. You can mix that up with the Tanner Bozer over one because I see that one going over. So those two are very parlayable with each other, if you like round props. A fight to over the distance is pretty good. It's minus one, 105. Um, that's almost pick them odds. That's pretty good, man. If you ask me the way this fight looks like it's going to go. Dustin has shown nothing but a good chin. Even when Ayn Kutalaba came after him and beat the shit lights out of him in that first round. Still came back strong. Somehow made that uh, a, a draw. I don't think it was a draw, but <laughs> it's, he made that a draw. Uh, so, I mean, and, and Dustin does, he did get gifted that fight against Max Maxime Grishin because I, I feel like he lost that one. But then they took him, they took it away in his last fight when, or, or the clear roundtree fight when I think he completely won that fight. And then they said he didn't win that fight. So now break on Kennedy, right? Six foot six, 84 inch, 83 inch, 80 something inch reach. He should have the measurables to keep the distance and beat Dustin. But what is, I'm looking at these uh, these fights that Kennedy is losing until he wins, right? So that's the key. Like, he's always losing the fight. Like, Carl Solberg losing the fight till he wins. Alberg now would murder him because the gas tank's a lot better than what it was back in the day, right? So, and but the, we're not using MMA math here. But even his last fight, was it Devin Clark that he fought last? Devin, Devin Clark, Clark rocked him at some uh-huh, point. Uh-huh. So that's my point. So he didn't. So what's the easy way to beat Devin Clark? Keep him at bay. Keep the distance and just go in. But he was always trying to like clinch up with him, get up in the corner. 
Okay, so the the point the the distance guy is going to be Dustin here. So you're going to see quick, very quickly that uh, and and uh, Kennedy doesn't throw a lot of volume. He does throw powerful, but he doesn't throw a hell of a lot of volume. And he doesn't throw volume from, I mean, he doesn't throw powerful strikes from distance. His powerful strikes are elbows in close or, or knees in close or something. He gets getting close. Does Dustin let him get in close? I don't know. Because if Dustin can manage this distance, then uh, plus 320 on a Dustin decision looks very nice. Plus 130, not as nice, but dust, but I really think if you're going to pick Dustin, it's going to be not Dustin knocking out Kennedy. It'll be Dustin winning a decision. Uh, all the finish equity, I feel, is on Kennedy at this point. So the over, over one and a half, over two and a half, and Dustin by decision. I like them all. I think this is going to be – I think he can hold him. I, Dustin is a professional kickboxer. I think he can keep him at distance. He keeps him at – but Kennedy doesn't push the action. That's the problem, right? He's always trying to get in close. What 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 it, what happens when you try to get in close and you don't enter the pocket right and you get jabbed up? How much of those yeah. can you walk through? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I I agree. I mean, Dustin, I think is way more durable. He's a glory kickboxer for for life, so he he knows how to play this game. And right. even though Kennedy has all the finishes on his record, I almost feel like if there's a finish, it's because he gets rocked. Because and and Kennedy is the more clearly higher finishing rate, but I just don't think he's as durable as Dustin. So it's how he's I, finishing like these fights, man. It's how he's doing it. He's like, like I, I've looked at all the finish. They're all like a close knit el el elbow. And then into the choke, like you said, he's grabbing the neck. You really think Dustin Jacoby's going to shoot on this motherfucker? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't, I just, I just don't foresee that. That's Jacoby has fight IQ. He ain't dumb. The one fight where his leg was broken, he won by boxing. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. It seems like the measurables are all in Kennedy's favor, but uh, I feel like all the fight IQ and the other aspects of MMA are in the Jacoby's favor. Yeah, it should be a should be a good one. Yeah, Moving man. on, we got the co-main event. We got Jessica Andrade or Andrade, sorry, versus Tatiana Suarez. Honestly, I don't even think this needs a huge breakdown. I think Suarez is going to take her down and and tap her out. And I think it'll be fairly quick, probably under, I'd say, the first 10 minutes or so. Like, I think she's going to do it quick. She's taken down better grapplers. She's finished better grapplers. I think she's going to finish Andraj. Uh, Suarez minus 400 to finish minus 125. I like her to get the submission. What do you think? Yeah, I'd like her to get the submission too. And I like it in actually round one. I mean, uh, sorry, end of round one, early round two. I've listened to a couple guys thinking that Jessica has the uh, finish equity here too to just catch her with a punch, but I, I just don't see it. She's too damn wild. Every time I see it, like the way she was entering the pocket against uh, Jian, Jianan there in her last fight where she got floored, she was entering so wild, so wild. And those fights that she won with Calvillo and Chukagian, I entered with like a body kick to Chukagian's stomach and and then Calvio, the quitter. So like those, I guess, oh, yeah, she's finished fights. But then look at uh, when she gets taken down, man. She actually doesn't know what to do on the ground, to be honest with you. Chichenko, I called the crucifix on Chevchenko, but that is, is, is Valentina. But like you said, this doesn't need much of a breakdown. Uh, round two finish is plus 400 for Suarez. I like it. It's worth a sprinkle. Um, I think she's safe to parlay. I think her finish is not as safe to parlay, but uh, minus 125 ain't so bad. Single bet it. I, I feel good about that finish. but uh, Yeah, me too. Hey, we'll, we'll see. All right, moving on. We got the main event. We got Corey Sandhagen versus Rob Font. Uh, I think it's pretty clear cut here. You, you got to like the overs. You got to like the over one and a half. You got to like the over two and a half. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be on Corey Sandhagen. Rob Font's got a hell of a jab, so maybe Rob Font can jab him up for five rounds. Who knows? Maybe he can. I think Sandhagen has more diverse uh, arsenal of, of, of strikes, the kicks, the, the elbows. I think he can mix in a takedown. And I think even if the fight does play out to be extremely close, which is possible, I still think that Rob Font wears damage worse on his face. He always gets busted up. So he's going to look worse, even if it's close. So give me Corey Sandhagen to get it done. What do you think? I think the value is on the over three and a half. Minus 135. 
to the fight going to decision is minus 105. So you get that whole round and a half. And uh, so I think that's where the value is. Um, Corey at minus 350. I'm not so keen on like parlaying him at that price. Uh, I don't mind his decision prop at plus 170 because I feel like that's the way this fight goes. Um, I mean, if you're going to play Corey by decision at plus 170, hedge it with Rob by decision, who is plus 550. So that's not a bad hedge either. So that's where I go. I wouldn't bet Rob. As an underdog at plus 275, I'd just take it straight to decision if you were going to hedge with Rob. Uh, there's no way yeah. he knocks out fucking Corey Sandhagen. And I feel like it's the same way. Corey Sandhagen, there's no way he no- knocks. I, I guess the only way he knocks out Rob Font, if somehow Rob Font was quote unquote not ready for this fight, took it on short notice and doesn't have the cardio I've seen for fucking like six fights. <laughs> I, I did, like you it, know, it, it would be a stoppage just because of damage. I don't think he's. I don't think there's anybody's getting knocked out here. No, me but neither, buddy. I, I, I can see his face just looking so bad that they stop it. <laughs> but they they let him go against Vera with that busted up eye and all that shit. So like, if they're gonna let him go against Vera looking like that, then I don't know. They're not gonna stop him. For Corey doesn't hit half as hard as Marlon does. Well, it's a pattern now, though. Like, Font's face was fucked after two minutes with Yanez. Even though he won by first-round knockout, his face was fucked. Two yeah, that's true, the though, though. But those two boys went at her, right? Like, I was wanting... I wanted the one... I just wanted it to get to round two. I'm just like, slow down, boys. Slow down. <laughs> they were just going... And Yanez wasn't backing down, and, and Font wasn't backing down, and <laughs> they were going. It's It was nice to actually see Rob fucking fight like that. Because he's never had an urgency, right? It's always yeah. like he's hanging back and trying to jab your face off. Because he has a great jab. Probably a top three jab in the division, to be honest with you. Like, it's that good, right? It's very snappy. Uh, it's probably better than Corey's jab. Like you said, though, Corey is the more well-rounded striker. But that jab by Rob could keep you in a fight. I've seen Kamaru Usman win fights with a jab. So... I mean, this fight's closer than the, <laughs> Yeah, man. So you got to find a prop for this fight, to be honest with you. Minus 350 is too wide. Corey Sandhagen and Rob Font are closer as fighters than minus 350. So figure it out, folks. I think the value is on the over three and a half because you get only $20 difference from the fight goes to distance. So that's where I'm going to play this fight. Plus uh, minus three and a half. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, guys, as always, in a minute, we're going to put up our chart. We'll have conservative picks, high risk, high reward picks. Uh, this card is not the greatest for betting. Both of us even said we're, we're not going huge on this card by any means. Um, guys, like, subscribe, drop a comment. Let us know who you're confident about. Let us know who you disagree with. Let us know your thoughts. And uh, hopefully we smash and make some money together. And we'll uh, see you for the next card. Have a good one.